I'm Teddy. And I like stuff. I like a lot of stuff. And one of the things I've liked a lot recently is the Defenders. Let's roll that back a little bit. Maybe not a lot. Maybe I didn't like the Defenders a lot. I liked it. I, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, pretty much, this is the show where I sit down whenever anything new in pop culture comes out, like a TV show, a game, something, a movie, something that I've consumed recently happens, um, and I want to give my opinions on it, because a lot of times I have a lot of opinions on this kind of stuff. Uh, during <laughs> The Defenders, I just found myself fucking taking notes, and I was like, I should probably put this to good use and put something up that explains my thoughts on all this, uh, going over these notes and why I think The Defenders is good and just good, and that's kind of it, nothing more, nothing less, it's just, it's just good, you know, just a solid seven, it's there, it's, it has some good moments, also has some bad moments, you know what I mean? But yeah, this is my show. Uh, that I'm starting. I've been meaning to start this for a long time. Uh, it will go up whenever something happens that I want to talk about like this. Um, it will go up on YouTube as a video, and it will also go up as an audio podcast on all your podcast services of choice. Uh, I assume it'll take a while to get onto iTunes, but I'm figuring this out as I go. This is my first take. If I gotta change something, I'll go back, but Let's get into this, right? So here's the thing. I was considering reorganizing these notes and going through it in a more organized fashion. I said, fuck it. No, I'm Teddy Chineris. Do I do anything right or well? No. <laughs> but uh, I took a lot of notes, so I kind of just want to go through these. I haven't gone through these notes since I finished watching the show, so I kind of want to go through them and take a look and see. Uh, I just want to discuss their chronological, so I want to discuss each episode and all that. Uh, we could be here for 30 minutes, could be here for an hour, so strap in buckaroos. That is a South Park reference. Buckle up, buckaroos. Shout out to that season of South Park, which I think was season 18. I don't know. Um, so here's the thing. Episode 1. This is my first note. Episode 1, comma. Really? Start on Danny? First episode was really uh, about checking in with everyone, and the tremor at the end was a neat cliffhanger. Uh, yeah, okay. So, okay. So I didn't take many notes for episode 1 and 2. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I think episode 1 and 2 are one of the weakest episodes of the season. I think 1 and 2 are the weakest um, actually, it's a close tie. It's like one and two and six and seven. The first two and the last two are both not great. I don't like the first two very much. I don't like the last two very much. I think both of those have problems. Um, but episodes three through six are all really, really solid. Um, I like those a, a good bit, okay? Let's not jump to conclusions and say a lot. I just liked them. I liked them. That's it. But, uh, some moments I liked more than others. But yeah, episode one starts with Danny. <laughs> like, the opening scene is Iron Fist. <laughs> and I was like, why are you doing this to yourselves, Netflix? I don't understand. Why would you start with Danny? That's a- okay. So there- I'll probably go through these notes, and then I want to cover some overlying issues <laughs> with this show. Uh, first of all, I'll give my quick, this is very important as well, I need to give my quick opinions on the previous shows and how I felt about those. I'll do that really fast and then we'll keep going through the notes. Uh, Daredevil Season 1, awesome. Really, really liked. Really, really good. Uh, Jessica Jones, fucking incredible. Really awesome. Like, they are, they are doing shit with this Netflix, uh, Marvel Netflix series, right? These Marvel Netflix series. Um... And then Daredevil Season 2 was awesome at moments. Like, the Punisher arc was so good. It was really good. And then the Electra bits were just not great. I mean, they were good, but they weren't amazing or anything. Um, and then Luke Cage, I thought, was good. I thought the later half of that season, the whole part with... Um, 
what's his name, Diamondback, right? The the whole thing, especially in the finale, where they're like, oh, Luke Cage has got to fight something. Give him a suit. And that, that I did not enjoy that very much. But Luke Cage himself as a character is really, really awesome. He might even be my favorite. Uh, just because he's like, he fucking, he has his heart in the right place. That's, that's all it is. Um, and then Iron Fist. Iron Fist was there. It was a show that existed. Uh, it was not great. <laughs> it was not, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was as bad as everyone said. All right, I'm back. I turned off my, f I went and silenced my phone. Anyways, I was talking about Iron Fist. Iron Fist is there. It exists. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's just there. Danny Rand himself as a character is not likable in almost any way, shape, or form. Colleen is... I, I liked Colleen a lot uh, more in Iron Fist than I did in The Defenders, but she kind of, like, doesn't help her character's case at all in The Defenders. Um, but yeah, so... The best characters for me, I think, so I would say it's close tie between Daredevil and Jessica Jones. Daredevil season one, Jessica Jones is like the best Marvel Netflix show. Uh, so let's just say Daredevil, right? And then Jessica Jones, and then Luke Cage, and then Iron Fist. Um, and I think that's kind of the quality of the characters as well, uh, which becomes a theme in The Defenders. They pair up. Daredevil and Jessica Jones a lot, and Luke Cage and Iron Fist a lot. The two weaker shows and the two stronger shows, which I thought that was very, very interesting that they just kept going on that. Like, they didn't... That was a very common theme. It happened a lot. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, let's just keep going on the notes. Episode 1, they start off... They start with Danny, and I was like, why? And then later you come to find out that the whole show is kind of centered around Danny, which... <laughs> What a mistake. Uh, <laughs> and then, well, it's a mistake, but it also leads to some good moments later on. So, and then they end the episode with, like, the tremor. It's, like, a big like, earthquake over New York. Uh, everyone feels it. And then it also ends with uh, Alexandra, uh, which I believe is Sigourney Weaver's character, turns around and says to Elektra, who's, like, alive now, which she wasn't alive at the end of Daredevil Season 2, um, she's like, they're just cities. You'll get used to watching them fall. And I'm like, also, you hear that line again later, almost exactly the same. I'm like, you couldn't even at least vary up this line, Madam Gal? What are you doing? Um, you hear that in the finale, and I'm like, was this purposeful? Was it Because it's just the same line. But it was probably purposeful, but I didn't think it was good to repeat it it's not a great line um but they basically they end with that and so pretty much you know that the hand resurrected uh electra and that there's shit going down because there's a giant tremor uh which i was like okay i guess that's an all right cliffhanger but it's not amazing um and then episode two the only noticeable part <laughs> from episode two was at the end um, this is when you finally start to see, oh, also, let me just, episode one was basically about catching up with all the characters. The one part I really did enjoy about episode one is that all of the, all of, like, the side characters that I didn't even remember from a lot of the shows were all, like, reconnecting. Uh, we were seeing where everyone was at, uh, since the end of their seasons, which I thought was relatively cool. Like, Malcolm from Jessica Jones, I didn't even, I pretty much almost completely forgot him. Um... Episode 2, the most important part was Jessica got in trouble, and Matt Murdock shows up and is like, I'm your lawyer, stop talking Jessica Jones, the thing that I think we've seen that in a bunch of trailers. Um, and then Luke and Danny fight. They find, they're basically, so, they basically have, like, conflict of interest. Uh, Danny's looking over this warehouse and watching these, like, uh, I guess technically they're the hand, but they don't even really know that they're the hand. Uh, but they're, like, cleaning up this warehouse, which is full of dead bodies, and they're about to blow it up, I think, or set it on fire. And they, and Danny's, like, asking them for information, about to, like, beat one of them for information. And this is, like, a kid that Luke Cage has been following and trying to help out, like, this kid. And Luke stops him, and then they get into a fight. 
and most of it is Danny being stupid, and then he summons the fist, and then it actually does, it shoots Luke Cage across the, the, the alleyway, and that was, that was cool. I really enjoyed that scene a lot, where they had to, where they fought, because it made, it made sense, um, and then we go on to episode three, which episode, it's either episode three or episode four, it's probably a close tie between those two, as to my favorites, um, their episode three was really, really solid. Uh, here's my notes. I think I have a good, yeah, I have a good amount of notes on episode three. So my first note says, so far in episode three, as much as this show is bland, I enjoy all the characters. Um, all of them except for Danny. All of the character interactions are really good. This really starts, in, it starts at the end of, C of episode two, but it's mainly, uh, a lot of it happens in, C in episode three where they all start meeting, uh, Luke Cage and Iron Fist have, like, this whole big discussion, uh, Matt and Jessica Jones are really starting, this is the thing, again, Matt, uh, Matt Murdock, Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, like, the, the pairing happens throughout, like, the whole show, which I think is awesome, because Jessica Jones and Daredevil are my favorite characters, and Luke Cage and Iron Fist are below, Luke Cage, maybe, again, I like Luke Cage a lot, but those are the two weakest shows, um, let's see here, I said, ew, the Iron Fist dialogue meeting Luke Cage, is that supposed to be human, <laughs> or humor, the first interaction was great, um, I'd have to, here, let me go back and check on what I was talking about there, all right, I'm back, Pretty much, pretty much. A lot of this actually was funny, the Luke Cage and Iron Fist interaction when they're first in Colleen's dojo, but <laughs> there's a moment where um, Colleen starts explaining Iron Fist's like, background, and Danny is like, I can speak for myself, and then he's like, there's this mystical place called Kun Lun, and it was supposed to be a joke, because Colleen says, there's this mystical place called Kun Lun, and then he says, I can speak for myself, and then he says the exact same thing, um, but... Luke Cage goes, oh, come on, this is, is this some kind of joke? And then Danny just goes, my parents died in a plane crash. And then, and then, like, he goes on with his backstory. But, like, the way he says it's really bad. Um, bad, bad writing and acting a little bit right there. But that's not, that's a little bit of a nitpick. Um, let's see here. I also said, oh, yeah. So, this note right here, I said, Rosaria Dawson slash Claire bridging the gap between the heroes totally seemed like what her character was meant for. Her character was made for the Defenders. It, it, I was very happy that uh, she pretty much brought a lot of them together and, like, held them together a lot of the moments. But uh, Claire continues to be awesome. Like, what a good character. Claire is really great uh, because she's just, she, can't, she can't do much. She can, um, she's a nurse, so she knows how to help people when they're injured. But other than that, like, she doesn't really know how to fight too well, if at all. But, um, piece of hair bothering me. Sorry, audio listeners. I'm getting it out of the way. Anyways, uh, that didn't help at all, just so you know. But, the, so Claire continues to be fucking great. Uh, and, like I said, her role of bringing Luke Cage and Iron Fist together is what she was meant for. Like, that is one of, like, her main purposes because it set it up in Luke Cage, it set it up in Iron Fist, and then boom, she was in both, she has connections to both, it was great. I was very happy about that. Um, my last note said, e episode three is easily the best so far, the Jessica Jones, uh, following Matt Murdock was an awesome scene, um, followed by the Luke Cage meeting Danny, uh, do, 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 the two more... The two more interesting characters had the two more interesting meetings. So I did want to parallel that. So just, I did really enjoy from episode two, I really enjoyed the Luke Cage and the Danny fighting. It was cool, but it was not as interesting and as neat as the Matt Murdock. This isn't when they first meet, but it's like the, uh, they first meet and then she leaves the police station. And you think, the way they frame the scene is like you think Matt's following her. But then it turns out that she's following Matt. And then they go around this corner. And then she slowly, like, sees him getting rid of the blind cane. Um, I don't know what that's called. It's just a cane. Uh, he gets rid of it. Or he folds it up, puts it in his bag or whatever. Uh, takes off, like, one of the suit jackets and just parkours up a building. And she's, like, snapping pictures of him. That scene was really cool. There's one shot specifically where 
uh, he's slowly, like, discarding stuff, and she sees him, and then as, like, I think the camera comes around the corner and sees him do, like, a quick, off, like, a, like, a garbage can, like, wall jump, like, into, out of the frame, like, really cool, uh, scene, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, let's see here, episode four. Okay, so here's the thing, right? The reason why I like the Defenders is because it's three really cool, really interesting, really good characters, generally. Uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage are all really good characters. Um, it's all of those three interacting, and it's, like, coming together finally, which is really, really interesting and really, uh, entertaining to watch. But, Danny is not a very good character, pretty much at all. I don't like Danny. He acts like a little kid. And the whole thing he did in Iron Fist and he does in this show. But the one of the things about the show is that they're very self-aware of it. Um, at some point in episode four, when they're actually all sitting around in that Chinese place eating dinner, um, he, like, Danny starts to have this tantrum again. And he's like, don't treat me like I'm some kid. And Matt just calmly goes, well, don't act like some kid. And then he's like, oh, listen here. And he throws the tantrum again. But... He, that's, that's the thing. At another point, they completely sideline him because he's throwing a tantrum again. And then he's like barely in that episode. And I was like, yes, let's go. Like they're aware of Danny's issues. I don't know why they didn't try and have, you know, maybe some character development to fix his issues. That would have been better. But they did, they were aware of his issues, which made me very, very happy. I was completely cool with that. Uh, that helped lessen his not great character. But yeah, episode four is probably my favorite. It ends with um, Electra comes in, Alexandra, and the other member of the hand, or the Japanese guy member of the hand, who I don't know his name. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna pull that up so I have all of the members of the hand's name real fast. Okay, I am back. The guy's name is Murakami. I believe I'm saying that right. Murakami. It's M-U-R-A-K-A-M-I. Uh, so the five fingers of the hand, right? I believe they reveal all five fingers in this episode. Not 100%. If they don't, they do it next episode. Um, it, which is Madame Gao, who we've seen over Daredevil. We've seen over... Was she in Iron Fist? She was in Iron Fist. She was in Daredevil and Iron Fist. I, she wasn't in Jessica Jones. She wasn't in Luke Cage. Yeah. Um, uh, who else? The new character, Alexandra, who is like the leader, right? So that's two. That's two. Alexandra is the, uh, what's the most important finger? I'd say probably the thumb. Absolutely the thumb. So Alexandra is the thumb, right? Madame Gal is the index finger, I would say. And then uh, Bakudo, who was probably the best part of Iron Fist, for being honest. Um, yeah, so Bakudo was number three, uh, an African-American, what, what did they call him? A warlord, I believe? Um, named Sawande, and then a Japanese guy named Murakami. He's the pinky. Because <laughs> he's completely a new character. Actually, Sawande would probably be the pinky, because... We'll talk about what happens to him later. Um, but he... These are the five fingers of the hand. And pretty much where I was talking about before I left off, my mom called me. I got all distracted, right? Um, let's see. I was talking about the ending to episode three. Uh, no, episode four. The ending to episode four. Alexandra, I believe Gao and Murakami are all there. I think Sawande is also there. I think the only one not there is Bakudo. I'm fairly sure. Uh... Yeah, so they're all there, Electra's there, and they're fighting at the end, and, well, th they're all fighting after this part. This part is the best. When Jessica Jones had left earlier, and then she busts through the door with a car, not the door, the wall with a car, and hits Electra with a car, and then she was like, missed me? That was a good, that was a good moment. Uh, but then the next episode, I believe, starts off with all of them fighting in the cafeteria, or not in the cafeteria, in the Chinese restaurant. Let me take a look here. I have it all pulled up. Um, yeah. Next episode is... Let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm a, okay. I'm dumb. And I was right. 
I was right, yeah. So the next episode is they're fighting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It starts off in there, and that's when a lot of the members of the hand come and it starts fighting at the beginning of episode five. Um, and that's when I put, for episode four, one of my quotes, I said, in hindsight, this is one of my major issues with the show and the universe that we've built up through these four shows. This is a main point right here. Bullet point for my discussion, right? This is a main one that really stuck out to me in episode four. All the rest, just little nitpicks. Just stuff I'm going over that I thought while watching the show. This one's big, right? In hindsight, they could have formed the five fingers of the hand a lot better throughout the five Netflix shows. I get that they were wanting to tell their own stories in the certain, in the different shows, right? But there are four heroes, okay? And Defenders, the show makes it five shows. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Daredevil season one, Madam Gao. You don't even have to have be, they don't even have to be main villains, right? They just need to appear for like an episode. Right? Like, I think it would have been fine if one of these appeared in Jessica Jones, right? But, like, Madam Gao, let's say Madam Gao, somebody for Jessica Jones, let's say uh, the Japanese guy, right? Murakami. Let's say he appears there. Um, who? So it's Murakami. Uh, let me pull up the list again real fast. Yeah. So Madam Gao for uh, Daredevil, Murakami for Jessica Jones, let's say Sawande for Luke Cage, and Bakudo for Iron Fist. Bakudo was in Iron Fist, right? The only two that happened was Bakudo in Iron Fist and Madam Gao in um, Daredevil. But other than that, Murakami was new, and Sawande was new, and Alexandra was new. These were all new characters. You could have built these villains up throughout your four shows, and then introduce the main big bad leader, Alexandra, in the fifth show when they're all teamed up, right? I felt, I feel like that would have been a no-brainer if they had, uh, planned this out from the beginning, which they did plan this out from the beginning. So I find that a little odd that that was not taken into account and that the, they didn't do that. But, uh, that, I don't know, that's, that's kind of a main complaint. My thing is, is this was good. Again, this was good. Defenders was good. But that's the main takeaway from this episode of Teddy Like Stuff, okay? I want, <laughs> I'm just gonna comment, Defenders was good, as the first comment in the video. Um, or I'll just title this, Defenders was good. Um, but the, it's not what we deserved. We didn't, we could have had more. There was so much potential with they could have built this hand universe up to then knock it down in in defenders they could have done that but they didn't uh but that's okay it's all right it's okay it's fine i'm not mad about it um let's see here i said okay <laughs> this is a funny note i took episode 5 18 minutes right so let, we gotta rewind it. Let's go back to like, I think episode one or two, Colleen is like, the hand have hurt other people, right? We're not the only people the hand have hurt. We're not the only people the hand are fighting. There are other people out there. We should go find somebody to help us with this fight, okay? We're not in this alone, right? And I thought that was a cool moment for Colleen. I thought it made sense for her character. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> episode five, 18 minutes in, when they're all teamed up and they're all doing shit, Colleen's like, bro, I didn't mean like this. And I'm like, the fuck you mean, Colleen? What do you mean? Oh my god, it was so weird. My literal, I put in quotes, this is not our fight. Or this is not their fight, it's ours. And then my note says, episode 5, 18 minutes, Colleen, this is not their fight, it's ours. And then I put in all caps, the fuck you mean? Because <laughs> she said it wasn't just their fight. In an earlier episode, that was the whole point. And then, so I thought that was odd. It was very throwaway, but that's nitpicky. Um, let's see. And then I wrote, Bakudo really was the best thing about Iron Fist. Cause let's be real, he was pretty cool. He was a pretty solid villain, right? Bakudo was cool. Shout out to Bakudo. Um, yeah, I thought this was awesome. I said in episode five, Jessica Jones' side character are uh, clashing with the Daredevil ones. I think, I think it was this scene. I think it was this episode. They have another part where they clash again in the finale um i believe but let me actually let me look so i'm sure i know what i'm talking about okay so 
It's what I thought. Um, in episode 5, Trish and Malcolm are talking. And, uh, who is it? Karen and Foggy both walk- Or, Karen walks in first, and then Foggy comes up and they start talking in the scenes. It's like, focusing on Trish and Malcolm, and then they- They're like, oh, who's that? Blah, blah, blah. They start talking about her. And then it goes over and, and like, focuses on them, which I thought was so cool. It's so cool to see these side characters interacting. It's not something I knew that I wanted from these shows, but it's something I got. Um... Let's see here. What's another note? What's in pregnant pause, boys? Um, let's see. Yeah, I another note. I said it really sucks that the whole show is centered around Danny. At one of the the main plot, pretty much, is that the hand need the iron fist to open this way. Um, you find out this more of this as you go, but the hand need the iron fist to open this doorway to get the substance that makes the five fingers of the hand immortal, uh, which they have been living for like a long time. That's another plot point that you find out. Uh, they were cast out of Kunlun, um, like forever ago, and then they've been living immortally and acting as the hand for years and years. Let's see here. Um... Daredevil suiting up in, in episode 5 was really great. I love Jessica Jones' interaction with uh, Matt whenever he's in the suit. That makes me very happy. I, I did like the nice ears, their horns, which that was given away in a trailer, but that was a good moment. I really enjoyed that. Um, let's see here. There's a moment with Danny, <laughs> right? Um, th I believe this is at the beginning of episode 6. I think we're done with episode 5 in my notes. Beginning of episode 6, um, they, d they realize that he is, that Danny is the one that they're after, that the hand is after. So they're like, we should lock you in this warehouse and not let you leave and put sh somebody on guard duty. That way, you know, it's the best course of action because that way if somebody comes to try and take him, it'll be guarded. Or, and you'll also be hidden away. So they hopefully won't know where you are. Um, but he was like, guys, I'm the Iron Fist, sworn protector of Kun Lun, which I let die. I gotta be on the front line destroying the hand. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what accent that was. I don't know what impression that was, but sure, that's what Danny Rand sounds like. We'll go with it. Um, so he was like, I gotta be in the front line, guys. You gotta let me fight, man. Uh, and then they were like, fuck no you're dumb sit down shut up kid and i was like yeah let's go and <laughs> but there was like this whole moment where they were trying to convince him and the whole time they were all just like rolling their eyes like come on danny just stay here we don't want to fight you just be smart about this please don't be an idiot and then they end up fighting but it starts with like this whole thing where danny's like they're like calm down danny and he's like that's just the thing I'm all out of calm. And then he like starts fighting. And I'm like, Danny, you were never calm to begin with. Other than when you're meditating, I guess. But you're always throwing tantrums. <laughs> like, calm down. Huh. Don't very much like Danny pretty much at all. Um, let's see here. <laughs> I wrote that. So that's a self-aware Danny moment that the show is very self-aware about Danny. I wrote down episode 6, 26 minutes, another self-aware Danny moment. So I don't even know at this point. I'm not even going to look it up. It's not important. Um, and the, I wrote down, oh no, they locked him up. And that he, the whole conversation between him and Luke Cage was very self-aware that Danny is dumb. Um, but this was another thing. Luke Cage was sat to guard him. Jessica Jones and Matt Murdock went off to investigate uh, more about the hand and find out more info. Uh, but it's the same pairings again. It's Luke Cage and Iron Fist and Daredevil and Jessica Jones. I will have to research. At the end of this, I'll research and I'll come back to y'all. I wonder if that has a really big significance in the comics. Because I don't think it does. I thought it was like the other way around. I thought uh, Daredevil and... I, well, not Daredevil. I thought Jessica Jones and Luke Cage were, like, really important for each other, which they are. Um, but I didn't know that Luke Cage and Iron Fist had anything, or Daredevil and Jessica Jones were, like, good friends or anything like that. I'll check this out. You know what? I'll look it up right now. Okay, I'm back. So this was a quick Google search, uh, but I couldn't really find anything about Daredevil and Jessica Jones being really connected in the comics. But Luke Cage and Iron Fist, or Iron Fist, Iron Fist are apparently, like, 
best friends in the comics. They're apparently really good friends, and they work together a lot. In 1972, there was a comic called Power Man and Iron Fist, uh, which is Luke Cage and Iron Fist. So that uh, makes a lot of sense between those two. They were also getting along pretty well. So especially in episode six, they did a really good job of that scene where uh, Iron Fist is tied up and Luke Cage and him are having a conversation. They did a really good job there. Um, that was, I, I actually did enjoy that, even with Danny being Danny. Um, let's see here. I wrote, episode 7 has another self-aware moment. The three walking in. Yep, okay, so at a certain point, at the end of episode 6, Danny is taken away um, by the hand. And Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Daredevil all have to do this themselves. But there's a moment where they're all walking into Midland Circle, and it's just those three. And it's like this heroic walk. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> we don't need him. So that was another self-aware moment that they had a big triumphant moment with the three. You know what I mean? Like they bit, they had a big heroic uh, hero moment, hero pan the camera around, uh, triumphant music moment with just the three. Uh, they had a, they had another later in the finale with the four, but they specifically set aside time to do it with the three. Um, and I thought that was interesting. I. Uh, Shout out to Netflix. They know what they're doing. Even when they mess up, they know what's happening. Um, and then I wrote, lack of one one take scene. Because uh, Daredevil is known that first hallway scene, the, the one take scene that was fucking dope. And then in season two, the stairway scene where they outdid it again was awesome. And I was like, I swear, if they do it in the Defenders, like, what if they did it in the Defenders? with all of them and the closest thing was in the finale around uh around 23 minutes they had a quick pan around which was one take of all of them fighting uh which was cool but it was like the not pan around i don't know the actual term but it was like the camera was going in just a complete circle like it was stationary and it was going in a circle um and that was that was one take but it was like 20 seconds 30 seconds it wasn't a minute at the most like it wasn't very long it didn't it did not it was not like here we're topping the stairway scene in daredevil season two with all four of them because how fucking dope would that have been guys it would have been really good um also i will say they blundered in the finale this is the next note at a minute and 21 seconds they i wrote down the timestamps. that's why i'm very specific uh they had a moment where Luke Cage said, sweet sister. And I'm like, you couldn't even get that right, Netflix. <laughs> you couldn't even get that right. I was just praising them a second ago, but still, you couldn't even say sweet Christmas? You said sweet sister? Come on. I. It's like, he says that too, but sweet Christmas is Luke Cage's thing. Like, oh, that would have been great. Um, and then, let's see here. Oh, so at 10 minutes and 40 seconds of the finale, Malcolm and Foggy had an interact, or Malcolm and Karen had an interaction with Trish and, um, I'm saying this weird. Foggy and Malcolm had an interaction and Karen and Trish had an interaction, which continues what happened, I believe I said in episode five, where they originally had the side characters interact between Jessica Jones and Daredevil. Uh, they continue that again, had it interact even more, which I thought was really, really cool. Like I said, it was not something I knew I wanted from the show, but it's something I got, the side character interactions. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Yeah, so <laughs> the final fight scene. Not the final fight scene, but one of the final fight scenes that kicks off when they go down the elevator and the hole in Midland Circle. They go down the elevator and they see, um, they see, like, they, they know that they're gonna, they know that the hand is waiting for them pretty much. So they're like, oh, here's what we gotta do. Here's our plan. And <clears throat> Jessica Jones steps off and has this whole thing where she's like, I don't give a shit because I'm Jessica Jones. It's great. I, I love her. And then, um, but it ended with like, I don't want to fight you alone. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And then the guy, like Daredevil swings in from the top and Luke Cage like jumps in. And I'm like, could have been a little bit better of dialogue for the surprise at least like it could have could have been a little better there like i knew it was gonna happen and then the i don't want to fight you alone i was like 
Come on. Um, but that fight scene alone, like, especially Daredevil, because Daredevil have fucking awesome choreography, but the whole fight scene there was really good. It was quite good. Uh, I really, really liked there. There was one shot specifically, I believe it was Daredevil fighting two guys, um, which ended in him doing like, you know, the flip kick that he does, that he does like a flip and he kicks the guy on his way down and the guy goes slamming down. Uh, I believe the guy's head goes slamming down into the water and his head, there's like a small puddle and with the flip, his two feet land like firmly in the water and it does like this splash and it looks great. It's real. it looks great. Um, let's see. And I will say at a certain point, this is a weird complaint. At a certain point in the finale, when the fighting really starts, um, at 25 minutes, they throw on, like, Luke Cage music. <laughs> they throw on, like, this hip-hop that's normally in Luke Cage. But I'm like, but why? This isn't Luke Cage. This is all, all of them. <laughs> it was a very weird stylistic choice to throw on this hip-hop when it's, like, a really serious moment. But then they were, like, joking around during the final fight. Really weird tone switch i thought um then i have <laughs> and then let's talk about the ending shall we i kind of want to devote a lot of time about the about the ending uh so they kill daredevil and electra right even though when they blow up the building and the building collapses on top of uh or it doesn't collapse on top of anything on top of the hole i guess it implodes into the hole when they do that, oh, Daredevil's dead, Electra's dead, even though they were in the room that had the substance to make people immortal. So we were supposed to believe that Daredevil's dead, even though Daredevil is confirmed to have a season three, even though it's Daredevil and he started the Marvel Netflix shows, we're supposed to believe that he died. For like 10 minutes, we're supposed to believe that he died. And then, and then the, <laughs> this is a, a note I wrote down. Uh, when they come out and all three of them are watching the building collapse, Danny's like, he told me something as, as, as I left. He, he whispered something in my ear. He said, he said, protect my city. And my quote said, my note in the paper says, in quotes, he said, protect my city. And then I wrote, fuck you. <laughs> Cause man come on you're passing and they have this whole thing where they're like passing the torch there's a scene where danny is on the roof like he's on a rooftop like listening like daredevil does like listening to all the danger below him and he's there and the fist is glowing it's a cool shot but i wrote danny on the roof at the end and then i put in all caps ew <laughs> you're trying to pass the torch from daredevil the best arguably one of the best uh characters between all of them and has one of the best seasons and has the first one, which really sets a tone for, like, what it could be, what it ended up not being, but what it could be. They're trying to pass a torch to Iron Fist, the worst one. I'm like, what are you doing? And, and then, and then they do Batman v Superman shit at the end, where they have a whole 10 minutes of where we're supposed to be feel bad for him, right? And then at the end, they show him alive. <laughs> and I'm like... But why would you show him a lot? Either commit or just don't do not do it. You did it for 10 minutes and then we're like, oh, he's alive. Thank God. Even if I had believed that he was alive, which I didn't, you ruined it. <laughs> you ruined your own, your own thing. Um, so those are all my notes. And then my last note said, thank God they showed Matt, but still kind of BVS right there. So I was happy. I am happy that they showed him at the end and they didn't leave us. But like at the same time, you know what? I'm a I'm a disagree with my own note. They shouldn't have showed him. If they were gonna com they either commit either shit or get off the pot, right? Um. So those are all of my notes for the defenders, guys. That's the first episode of Teddy Likes stuff. Will we continue when something else comes out that I have enjoyed? Uh, will I do a regular Teddy like stuff for shows that are going on during the season, such as the 100? <laughs> Maybe that sounds really fun. Uh, I enjoy this guys. I think next time I'll, uh, come at it with a little bit more organized thoughts, but I did like just going over all the episodes, like going through. So episode one and two, not great. 
not great. Uh, episode 3 through 6, as you saw, I really liked a lot of the stuff from 3 through 6. I thought it was really good, especially 4. I think 4 is the best episode. And then 7 and 8 were just... As you you might not have paid attention, I had one note for episode 7 where I was just like... Most of the time I was watching, I was just like... Why? why, why? And then episode 8, I was like, jeez, man. I did prepare myself. I knew the finale was going to be bad from what a lot of people had heard, so I mentally was ready for the finale. But I don't know if I could ever be that ready. I will I will say that because, man, that finale just really stumbled. Like the, like the whole thing, the blowing up the building. Like, really? You're going to blow up a building in the middle of New York? And then at the end, <laughs> the, I, I do like that they were, a lot of the time they were like uh, really, they knew that they were going to have severe consequences. They're like, this is terrorism, they said at one point. Um, but then at the end, there was none. <laughs> There was no consequences, which I guess you got to expect because it's a superhero show. And like, are they going to put them in jail? I mean, they did with Luke Cage, but you can't do it more than once. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, guys, the Defenders was good. It had a lot of issues. The main villains being one um, with the hand not being very interesting other than Madame Gao. That's another main point I didn't really discuss. Madame Gao. Very interesting because she's built up. Bakudo, really interesting because she was built up. Alexandra, not, didn't really care. Like, they didn't build her up enough. She just really had this faith in the black sky, and then the black sky killed her. Which I thought was actually a really good moment when Elektra killed her and took over. Um, Elektra was still Elektra in the end. Which, Elektra has always been fucking insane. So, stay away, Matt. Stop. Stop trying to help her. She's crazy. Um, but I enjoyed the Defenders a lot. I'm trying to think if there's any other final points that I want to get across. I don't think there is, man. The Defenders was good. I really, really did enjoy the Daredevil, Luke Cage, and um, Jessica Jones interactions. It was really funny. They had a lot of good moments. Um, like the, the whole Daredevil wearing the scarf I thought was great. Uh, that whole scene where... Daredevil didn't want to take off the scarf. I thought was awesome. I think that's in episode 5. Because he's the only one with a secret identity. The rest of them are just Danny Rand, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones. And I thought him, like, explaining the secret identity was cool to people who don't actually do it, but are doing similar things to him. That's not something you see normally. Um, so yeah, overall, the Defenders had a lot of really neat, some unique moments. It was good. But... It stumbled too much to be anything better than good. Uh, it didn't stumble enough to be bad. I I thought it was I thought it was good. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you thought of the Defenders. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, in the YouTube comments below, or you can tweet at me at Teddy Chineris on Twitter. Uh, I will see y'all the next time I like a thing. <laughs>